Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So, lesson three for Matty Boy here. Mm -hmm. You've been making some serious progress in the last, I'd call it, week to 10 days. Yeah, the last uh, couple of weeks, things have started to click a bit for me. Really changed a lot. Some of the things you were struggling with, I've seen really change. Mm. Uh, I'm excited about this one today. Yeah, I, me you too. Know, can't wait to see what Scott's gonna got as the next step on, uh, on the journey, but even in just some of the club testing that we've been doing, I mean, that's, that's a quite good benchmark. How it is, yeah. easily we get through a certain test is a bit of a function of where you feel with your swing. 100%. And, and also now what I'm seeing is the this, this, this speed's coming out that I've never seen from you before. Yeah, like I can, def I can definitely move the club faster. Yeah. Um, and I think in my iron practice that I've been doing, it's basically just most of the time I hit balls just seven irons. Right. Um, I, to be honest with you, don't really practice the driver. The only yeah. time I really hit drivers when we come in and do product testing. Right. Um, but I think that's helped me because obviously it's easier to, to make these motions with the iron. Yeah. And then it, it bleeds its way into the driver. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. There's a couple things I think you'll probably notice this week that are a little sloppy that we may need to clean up. But um, yeah, I'm excited to go from there. Over to the guru. Okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think in a constant radius, right, which is a very different um, swing than Ian's, right, where the we're ratcheting up the tensions, if you will, yeah. and causing the, um, the control of the, the radiuses of the arcs that we talked about in, in the first lesson, um, tightening those things up. And in your case, you know, coming from maybe being a little too loose with the swing when we, yeah. you know, when we first started, now we're tightening this thing up and you're actually gonna find speed because you're gonna find some better engagements, muscle engagements throughout the system right. as we create these tensions. So it wouldn't surprise me that you are getting quicker. Yeah. Okay, but let's uh, let's have you hit a few. Sure, and, uh, let you see where things are yeah, at. Yeah, we'll see where things are at. Probably a little bit of that is the dominant uh, miss, if you like. It's crept back in a bit, yeah. yeah. A bit of a strong the right side. the right side. Yeah, it's, that's, that's okay, definitely so come back a bit. Yeah, so a little, the cool part about this is most of this is a, a setup. Okay, okay, cool. A little bit P1 to 2 or early takeaway stuff. Yes. But most of this is going to be in setup. So go ahead okay. and set up again for me. One of the things that we talked about in, in week one was where the creases on the elbow were pointed. Yeah. We want this one to point about 45 degrees to the left, kind of toward my finger. Uh -huh. Okay, we wanted this one though to be basically square with your toe line. Okay. So to do that, we're gonna lower this left side a little bit. Okay, we're gonna feel like the inside of your elbow is only about two finger widths from your rib cage right, right. now. Right. Now, you're gonna remember, uh, you know, to nail this P2, we're gonna go two, one, six. Okay, and that refers to how many finger widths are okay. between that elbow and the rib cage. Two. So that setup's gonna be two. Uh -huh. Now when you go to P2, and we do this correctly, it's gonna be one. So if anything, the elbow's actually pinched yeah, in. The elbow actually goes this way okay. as you move this way, uh -huh. okay? So we're gonna go two, we're gonna go one. Yep. Now go up to P4. As you get to P4, there's gonna be about six. Mm -hmm. okay. So two, one, six, okay? And then there's where the wrists need to be. Sure. Now from there, now as this comes back down, okay, what we're gonna feel for you, one of the things that's gonna give you a little more space, a little bit better feel with your with your club face, is we're gonna try and add a little bit of flexion here in that hip as you start down. So as we start down, we're gonna go this way. Okay, so you're gonna feel like you're actually bending here Interesting. as you start from P4. Now what that does is this gets this elbow back in front. So okay. I feel, okay, let's, let me try this in parts here. So one, I gotta point it more at address. Just a little bit, yeah. Almost even with your toe line would be ideal. Okay. And that just helps create this external rotation. So right now you feel that in your infraspinitis right here. Sure do. Right where my finger is, okay. So that's now, okay from here? That's good. Now a little bit more this way. Yep. Okay. And then to start down, you're saying like more this way? Correct. Okay, so it's we have more. to reestablish the angles that we had at basically had address. So this knee is gonna flex a little bit more. This hip is gonna flex a little bit more as we start down. You see how that gets this elbow down in front of you? Interesting. Okay, now the bad one, when this gets a little bit loose and gets a little bit wide at P2, it's kind of like two, four, and then what actually happens, this gets too narrow at the top of the swing. Yep. Now it gets trapped behind you, and then what'll happen is generally you'll go this way and we're a little bit stuck. Gotcha. Okay. I just start Is that down. okay there? Yeah. And so pushing that way. Correct. To start. Right. Now, you feel how that felt like it gave you a lot more space and room in front of me? In front of you. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Let's try that again. Here. Yeah. Is that even yep. anything? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have to get back to the feeling of bicep curl, essentially. Yes. Now, one swing. of the things you got to be li just a little careful of, or cognizant of, is, is the amount of dorsiflexion in the trail wrist. So when this doesn't load enough, uh -huh. that's the depth, that's the shallowness. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so if I underload this, you see how steep this gets. So the problem is you're not going to swing down that steep. So I don't want to stand the club up. No, you actually want to be one more that there. Way. Okay. Okay, so this elbow, so the hand is bending backward, right? The elbow is externally and going this way. Gotcha. Good. Okay, excellent. Now, let's do it this time without stopping. Right, good. Now, just like Ian a little bit, I've changed the pitch in the planes a little bit. You're gonna hit some thin shots here. Right. Okay, because I've taken away some of the steepness that was there before. Interesting. Okay, that's it. It's a left elbow, good, yeah. Nice, Matty. There you go. Very different finish, though. Mm -hmm. The whole thing feels different. It feels good, though. Good work. Now, if you get this idea, you get the elbows for free. It definitely feels like the elbows are, are, are staying with each other, Correct. more so. I mean, it's definitely feel good. How smooth it looks. I mean, that's a beauty right there. It's such a nice flight, Matty. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's, yeah, the club head speed is coming out of it easily. Very different. Yeah, I, I don't feel like I'm gonna hit a pull. That's the first thing yeah. I'm noticing. Is that me whipping, like my hands going before I've settled in? Right, exactly right, okay? okay. So instead of reestablishing the, 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 you know, let's say the heights, yeah. you know, or the radiuses really, because that's controlling some of the radius here. I just kind of. We just kind of stayed up here and did this. Okay. Okay? Makes sense. I want you to feel, same thing, just feel a little bit like we reestablish that left leg a little bit. Don't worry about the right, your right. So just working. on my left side. Yeah, okay. your right side's working nicely. Just felt lower, correct? Definitely, yep. Definitely felt lower. Aside from hitting that fat, that actually felt like a good swing. Okay, so let's, let's the nice tie in here from a speed perspective, okay, is understanding where the speed comes from. Right. Right, club speed there was 97 miles an hour. Jeez. Right, it's not feeling like 97 miles an hour. No. Okay, so let's take you up to the top again. So. You gonna make me go over 100 and Ian's gonna fire me or? <laughs> 100, 105 maybe, 109. That's where. Drew Cooper on That's it, where so. job security ends. Yeah, okay, so up, security up ends. to the top. Yeah. Right. Now, so. Idea, like this is probably gonna straighten up in a real swing a little bit more. Sure. Now, as you feel the pressure here and sit here, okay, so sit and feel the pressure at the same time, right. That's actually putting more energy into this because you're using your mass dropping to speed the golf club up. Right. Okay. okay. That was interesting. I felt like I sat into that well, but I don't, I, think I don't know, it just was missed time. Just a hair first, just a hair. Hands first, okay. Ooh, club speed. Oops. Oh boy. <laughs> that was lovely. Nice fancy boy. Yeah, that I think lovely. that's one of the good takeaways for the viewers is, you know, for every five miles an hour change you have, you've got to reassess some, th some things. It feels very different, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even that one being, not, I mean, I, I don't push speed when I practice, but I don't swing at 98 when I practice, I can tell you that. Those last two felt really good. Very fluid. Sound of them. A gunshot. They're crunch, that's for sure. Yeah. Right. But important to say this, what we're working on is, I understand it produces speed, but that's not why we're doing it. Correct. We're doing it because I've got a little sloppy with the... With right, the, the big, big 
you know, thing we want the viewers to, to really understand today is just how that left elbow set up changes things a little bit. Mm. And then from there, we had that 216. Okay, yes. it was kind of our yes. our reference, if you will, for the elbow to the rib cage uh, numbers. Relationship, yeah. And then from there, you know, we felt a little bit different pressure point. The key is not feeling it in the crook of the index finger until very, very late. Right. What we call P6 or last parallel. That's about the first time we should feel the pressure in the index finger. Before that, we're feeling much, much more pressure in the Under top here. of the thumb or the side of the thumb, I'm sorry, yep. here. And if we get it in the side of the thumb, we're getting the elbow for free. Yep. So this nicely correlates to our spoon drill and some of the feelings that we had about the left hand going toward the right thigh. Right. Kind of ties all those things into it, but it feels less manipulated now. It definitely does. So I, I would say in my brain, I'm thinking I need to get this elbow organized in the backswing, get more comfortable with that then I can work back in the spoon drill, then I can work back in the back of the left hand drill yep. to neutralize path. It isn't far off what we practiced no. maybe, you know, three lessons ago. Right. Um, but I do like the addition of this kind of feel because that, that really helped me sequence the downswing. So mm. I'll definitely be working on that big Perfect. time. Yeah, it just I mean, buys you that fraction, to... doesn't it? That little split second of time just to get a couple of everything together, you know, for it not to be such a rush from the top. I need a, I need a not hands first thought mm -hmm. or I get into trouble. So yeah. the, the issue I think for the last little bit has been, I've, I've definitely been able to make some good swings and things are improving, but I have been thinking hand moving from the top. Yeah, sure. That's been my first thought. And I can see how that's probably gotten me in a little bit of trouble. Now I'm gonna think, you know, sit into this side a bit more. Yeah. And I think that sequences things a lot better. Cool, okay. awesome. All right, I got some work to do. We both do. We both get some work to do. Yeah, cool. and Scott is now paid on retainer to not allow Matt to go any faster. 90, <laughs> 90 is fast enough. I'm, I'm swinging like a madman for 94 and you're cruising at 96 like it's nothing. Well, you added five, six miles an hour in yeah. 20 minutes. So oh, it's good. It's good. It's good it's to good. see that it's there. Well, it's good for the goose, good for the gander. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, it's, it's nice to see, you know, the, the kind of levers being pulled and, and the right parts for both of us. And like speed always comes pretty easily for you. And can neutralize and then hit it a little, you know, fairly straight. It comes quite easy to me, but yes. we're, we're kind of trying to have a little bit of each other's you know, best bits. As, as we always joke, if we could combine swings, I think we'd be doing pretty good. Perfect, yeah. perfect. That'd be awesome. All right, thanks, thanks, thanks Scott. Awesome. That was My appreciate pleasure. it. Thank Great you. stuff. Guys, I think we're talking about some of these things, uh, you know, off camera as well, that we're talking about swing a lot right now. We know that swing is not all that's needed to perform at a high level. So as we get closer to the season, I do want to add some other things into this series as well. And one of them is invite Scott to come on the podcast and talk about some other developmental things that a golfer needs to play their absolute best. So 100%. And, you know, I think as we get closer to the tournament season, it will become, uh, you know, less time in the garage, yeah. you know, if you will, more time on the track, right. you, know, mm. uh, you know, hitting different shots, playing different ways, yeah. different skill developments, and then obviously testing under the gun and Love it. Um, nobody became a great tournament player without playing a lot of tournaments. Yeah, so that's a good point. Yeah. We have to do, you know, uh, we have to be prepared for that and, and prepare for the, the, you know, the, the ups and the downs yep. to that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I look forward to talking about that stuff. Definitely. Good. Okay, guys, hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. Stay tuned for more and we'll see you again soon.